So it's it's, a, it's like a salt. You just say f- filthy. It's a family show. Don't you think it was only huh? you always think about that? No, I don't. I haven't even face. told you yet. Your face, your I have, I have, what, I've given it away, have I? What you said to Chris. That's fantastic news. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, he was just letting me know that he bought a new car. <laughs> Apparently, he's just had an email saying everything went through. They didn't even, yeah, so we'll get the notice <gasps> tomorrow. So, it's been a quiet January and we do apologise for that, but we literally have nothing to say until now! Sorry. I'm a little bit excited. Yeah. We literally found out five minutes ago, less than five minutes ago, because we said so much so quickly. <laughs> we got the plan in. Oh my. What a roller coaster. It's really big, isn't it? <sighs> that was... Uh, Honestly, the most brutal emotional roller coaster ever the last year. Essentially, they refused, well, they wanted to, they recommended it for refusal three weeks ago on a couple of occasions and said that they couldn't see a way through. And our consultant is just awesome. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. You know, Shout kept on pushing and said, Look, we're willing to work with you on this. You can, we, we can work through different things. And he was digging through policies and we have revised kept, the plans. He kept him talking, didn't he? He kept yeah. him talking. We did have to change some things to the outside, but he didn't care about the inside at all, which is amazing. No. We've I'm got sure. an upstairs, we've got the annex, we've got... A bigger garden out here. We've so got a patio, covered patio. Solar um, panels, if we want them. Yeah. So in the last hour, we've just found out that after two years of battling and stress, we've got planning permission for our barn conversion. And this is something I've been waiting that long to do. Let me show you what it is. Check this out because this is what we're gonna be waking up to every morning. Basically, this whole west face of the building is all kitchen, dining room, that sort of stuff. And this is what the outlook is. So I've made up rough floor level there. There is a block to come off, but this is what the kitchen window is like. And I'll see if I can find it, but remember when we first came to this farm about three years ago, we stood here in this exact place and we pressed our face up against these gaps here, saw that view and knew that this was what we wanted. And this is what we wanted to, to live in, this big old cow shed. So there we go, two years, well, three years now, we've made it, well, we've made it this far. There's an awful long way to go still, but man, it feels good. Look, if it wasn't farmy enough for you, one of our chickens comes in here every day into what will be the kitchen, into this big box of sawdust and lays us an egg and that is hot still. <laughs> I'm not saying that's gonna be a regular occurrence when we're done, but she's a creature of habit, that one. Right, we've had a few days. Uh, we're still thrilled and excited, but now we can share a bit more of the information. We wanted to share a bit of the plans because it has changed since those crummy old class Q plans <laughs> back last year, which, I mean, we got something. We got planning in the end for the, uh, for the basic version, but this is far better, so. Far more expensive. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a whole other situation that we're actually going to try and pay for this. But anyway, garden was the first thing that changed on this. Yeah, well, both gardens. So we've got a garden at the front of the cabin, and we've also got a massive wall garden, barn, which is not cabin. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, we're, we've kind of fenced off barn. that lawn area. Um, but it's extended our whole red line, which is what changes the land from agricultural to domestic. Um, and so both of the um, silage clamps where we are currently in the cabin. So, yeah, we've got parking spaces, we've got bike store, we've got bin store all outside. Yeah, um, they were conditions, weren't they? And we've got greenhouse too. Yes, we did have to have... Um, but they didn't, so... But on electric point, did yeah. they, for car charging, which is unusual because that's generally a requirement. I mean, nowadays. I think we'll allow for it, but on our... So as well as our class queue that we had approved, our third class queue, which we had refused, we actually have got that at appeal, and it's been in for 
eight months and the appeal system in the UK is completely overrun. It's just, yeah. Right, so I don't even know when we'll hear back from that. Yeah. Um, and we don't really need to, but pulling out now... You can incur we, costs. Yeah, it's just easier to leave it. It might, you never know, it might help someone else in our area. They could use it as a case study if we win it. But When you look at the plans of the actual downstairs building too, um, it will look like, like for instance, we put a swimming pool in there. That's... <laughs> We are in no way fit shape to be affording a sewing pool at all. It's it was more ridiculous, I know, as it sounds, a space filler because it it's so extreme. It's so we suggested it as like a games room or a yeah. gym or something like that. I don't use a gym, but you know that sort of recreational space. And then when we just in conversation mentioned swimming pool, um, Chris, our consultant, said that if it's a indoor swimming pool and obviously uh, even an outdoor swimming pool but it's better to have it on the plans even if you don't do it because otherwise you would have to get it Planning, in the yeah, future yeah. good news is the conditions weren't too crazy there's a few things we've got to iron out like boundaries which is a bit silly it's, because it's just how, what we do with the boundaries these are the plans as you can see on the screen that have been put out and it, and on there it shows kind of where the existing fences are the ha-ha bit we've done it the at the border of the lawn, the native hedging, but they still want us to sort those conditions out, even though, even though they were on here. So it's a they bit frustrating. Want, they want more detail, and I think it's I think it from our consultant's point of view, I think it's pretty normal that they put something on that they want further information on. So it was, yeah. it's, it's it's a good thing that it's something so. It's just another easy. eight ten weeks yeah. now. Yeah, that's before we can we break can break ground. Well, we can we do. Be- that blah, 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 blah. we can do below ground level works yeah but we can't so all the drainage okay. foundations almost up to dpc i guess is it's, what the idea to made a joke that we could actually start on the swimming pool now even though we can't afford to can't do it. anything but we could do the swimming <laughs> we pool we could dig the hole <laughs> dig the hole and oh, then I, look I, at me. I did actually What's it's like a whip on? the digger and stuff in there you could potentially dig a big hole and then just erect scaffolding, like a deck in there, erect, board it over. What a word to use. So it's, it's, a, it's like a solid... You're just so f- filthy. It's a family show. Don't you think it was only you huh? always think about that? No, I don't. You can erect scaffolding. There's nothing wrong oh, with erections. I like the word moist. They're just two words that should be avoided okay. at all costs. <laughs> moist. They're taking it too step too far now. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the design itself, because... It is excessive and it looks over the top, but we basically had to work with the building size and shape and everything that's there. We weren't allowed to make the building any smaller. One of the problems they had three, four weeks ago was the fact that we'd cut into the building. For so the where you patio. see this area here, we'd put a patio and we'd area taken, there, taking the roof back. Yeah, because we'd ha- we'd got like a balcony coming out of our bedroom. Again, we kind of knew we were pushing it, but we thought, well, we may as well go for broke. Um, and then we thought there'd be a conversation. But then it obviously dawned, dawned on us that they'd changed things and that they didn't have to chat anymore. And that panicked us quite a lot. Yeah. We so were we like, said, oh, we wouldn't have done put that. Put the roof back on. If we'd known. And we've kind of made it, we tried to keep it outside of the walls of the house. Yeah. So it's a bit like an internal conservatory. It's more of an atrium a, or something like orange. that. Orangery. Oh, I don't know. It's, I like it's, that word. It's a garden room, basically, yeah. so it, it can be closed off from the house, but it will have glazing around it, but a roof with roof lights over the top of it. We figured it would be nice for, like, drying our clothes in winter when we can't afford it. It'll kind dryer. of extend the seasons, I'm thinking. And it will be good to, like, have all our patio furniture in there during the winter, too, covered, winter, yeah. rather than... Yeah. One big, big change, which um, we're really pleased we got through, is our original plan, because of the size of the barn, it was too big for one house under a class Q... So we made it into one large and one small, and the small is up to 100 square metres. Uh, so we made, we put a two-bed house, basically, dwelling, at, uh, in addition to ours, which we would use like an annex. But because it was going through as a second dwelling, that meant two supplies for electric, water, all that sort of stuff, also meant council tax. Two lots of council tax, and yeah. Um, it would have meant we could rent it out if we wanted to, um, but... We kind of looked at the balance of it and we thought when we put the full app in, we'll change it to uh, an annex. Therefore, it has to be an ancillary use to the house, 
which is how we saw it being used anyway, more friends and family. And um, we just needed to show that it was not, it, it was dependent on the house. So it's got a door through to the house. It's only got a little kitchenette, but we've done it in a way that it's just future proof for multi-generational living and all that sort of stuff. Um, it could and, be, it could be Eden's first it. home or it could be our parents' home. Yeah. You know, if they, you know, they're, they're in no, no need for it at the moment, are they? And likewise, Eden's not in a need for it either. But she's 11 today. She's not having a two bed apartment. I know. I'm just saying, by the right. time we finish this, <laughs> she'll, she'll, be, be, she'll like, be in retirement. I'll get be retired. Me out of the cabin and in my own space. So uh, that is what the plans are looking like downstairs. So it is massive as far as square meterage goes. I'm not even going to tell you. I mean, it is. Well, it's, it, it comes to 600 and something, which is. It's ridiculous. just stupid. I mean, that's over double the size of our last house. Especially as we are living so well in a, just over a hundred square meters. I I mean, it it's busy in here, but <laughs> but oh, as far as the camera can see, it's tidy. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's it's all right. And this is we'll appreciate it. Put it that way. Going yeah. back to a big house. Well, but when we're I still worry about the cleaning on a daily basis. I worry about the cleaning <laughs> and the tidying. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of this that falls outside of that square meterage. So that games room, pool, whatever it's going to be. Yeah. The the annex really can be closed off. Yeah. And it might not even be furnished or anything for, and for some years. And the overcover patio too. You know, they're kind of... Yeah. So that they show up as indoor space for planning reasons, but actually they're not. Um, so we've got five bedrooms upstairs and we've... We put in another bedroom downstairs, but actually we're going to use it more like a library or homework room, that type of thing. So It could, it could be uh, another study, to be honest. Because That's what I mean, yeah. Our study here, I meant for us, but... Oh, office, so... Yeah, um, because that one's... Yeah. But it, it, we'll see how it goes. So let's talk about what we had to change to keep them happy. Um, we were allowed to change the roof in the end, which was... Really good. That was a big, a big deal win. to you, wasn't it? It was, well, I was, it was happy to more to do with the asbestos. The inside that we gained. My yeah. I mean, it would have been a real pain if it had just being able to build this really beautiful house below an asbestos roof would have just felt horrible. And, I know. I was just and thinking I could about just the savings. Decades of comments, well, years of comments on our videos asking why and yeah. you know we can explain it in the first half a dozen videos of what's going on and why they're still on asbestos roof but then you've got to remember for years we have comments on our old videos so i could just see that and i know that's a bit of an odd worry to have but we'd have to pin all these comments <laughs> yeah from, from us and obviously health and safety <laughs> yeah. um and solar panels and anything we want to see on that roof Cutting it would have just been for the lights and stuff yeah. like that so yeah. that was amazing but my biggest aim for the full application, one of the driving forces for going full app rather than class Q, was we're allowed to make the building bigger. Not that we need more room inside, but we can change our wall thicknesses to be slightly bigger. Right. And we couldn't do that in the class Q. Remember, we got a whole rejection of a planning application because we showed the gutter back up on one corner and extended the roof by 50 millimetres. No, it was already there to begin with. It just fallen down um, in the storm. That's how fussy it was. So we wouldn't have had solar panels. We wouldn't have had uh, wood burner flu, anything, any projection. So this way, we were able to show that the walls are going to be uh, insulated externally because it's a steel frame building. And me and my building science worries, I was just... From a condensation risk point of view, I've done a lot of research, haven't you? Into I just wanted everything. It just makes sense to have, especially uh, as it's so big. We need to consider the final heating costs and yeah. keeping it as as minimal as possible. We'd rather skimp a little bit on spec of the internals and just spend as much as we can on insulation because otherwise we're going to hopefully, even if we do have enough money to finish this. We won't be able to afford to live in it. So yeah. just go all out on insulation and approach it. Hopefully some of you might remember three years ago when we built the workshop, we built a timber frame, a nice chunky mortise and tenon timber frame, and then we just wrapped the outside of that using insulated panels of some sort. And we haven't decided what route we're going to take yet, but that is exactly the same principle. So we'll have this warm kind of tea cosy around the whole building plus insulation as well inside that and 
that was just a, a big deal for me. So yeah. the fact that we got that is great. Um, we have had to keep cladding. Yeah, and the um, metal. What's it called? The corrugated. Corrugated metal. Yeah, sheet so thing. cladding. Yeah. Oh, is that cladding as well? Well, it's a I form of cladding. I always think cladding's wood. I never think of it as a metal. Yeah, it's kind of a, yeah, it's still sheeting. Me- yeah, metal sheet. So yeah. the the north and south, the gable ends are corrugated sheet at the moment, and we've said that we'll keep it and redecorate. One of the other things that we were pain, thinking, but... and we were on the edge with, and we were having quite a few heated discussions about, um, was they want. We were thinking they would want us to keep our planning officer that thought that that the what the thing that would rock the boat was changing anything to the outside. So he was um, encouraging us or suggested that we even said we were going to keep the breeze blocks at the bottom, um, which are pretty ugly. Not actually that. They've got holes in them from where things sound. are being bolted. And... Um, and, I mean, so now we're, but we, we put our foot down and actually our planning officer said he thought it would be okay. Um, so we, we are allowed to face them in red brick slips, aren't we? Uh, not even slips, proper bricks. Ah, so okay. so, so we've, we've come out 200 mil, so enough for insulation and brick. Uh, I don't know if it's cheaper than slips, but slips are, I'd rather have a nice, it's, we're basically creating a cavity wall um yeah. uh, so that that's do it properly yeah it's gonna be far more solid and it just means that yes we can get more insulation on the outside of the frame and use the red brick so it just matches everything else around the farm so looking at our plans we've been discussing like what are going to be the big ticket p- ticket items and then trying to weigh up what do we prioritize where do we put the bulk of our money where you know what's really important like tim said insulation definitely key what can we save money on what's going like glazing yeah. don't think we can save money on that we need it to be yeah a good high quality and you're only going to glaze it once yeah whereas well yeah the downstairs floor is obviously a huge bit so we're looking at cheaper ways to do that not putting hardwood flooring down like we'd love um or stone porcelain tiles and stuff like that but yeah. looking at cheaper things. So we'd love any info or your just thoughts about what you would um, sacrifice or Well, not even prioritize. sacrifice, just put off. Yeah, exactly. Or what, yeah, because any, any ideas or tips, we are new. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, fl- flooring is, for here, because of the size of it, Yeah. even if you go for a mid-spec or even budget option, if you've got to have 300 square meters of that, everything becomes expensive. So um, we want to yeah, visit a few people who have done polished concrete, because if you've got to pour a slab down anyway, over the top of any heating or whatever, or insulation, there's the option to, to just create a polished concrete floor and it still future-proofs it potentially that we could, you know, retile or, or whatever in the future. Um, yeah. So there's a few few things like that. The reef, fortunately for us, is a, a relatively simple installation. Might it's basically like a warehouse. <laughs> it's again, it's a square meterage thing, but the pro, you know it will be like a box profile uh, steel reef. So that's not yeah. the most expensive. It's not like no. it's going to be a the, the, standing seam. The big reef cost with the roof will be getting rid of the asbestos. Yeah, which was all quoted yeah. last year anyway. We, so we know what those figures are. Anyway, we won't go into the finances because no. that would just spoil the party. <laughs> Let's not go down that road. Um, Upstairs? Let, let, hang on. One of the biggest benefits of getting a full application over a class queue, we'd have to do it in three years. We have to start it. It's a benefit and a curse, I'm not going to lie. I know. I mean, obviously, we don't want it to go on much beyond two or three years, but <sighs> the, the fact is that that pressure is off so we can go a higher spec but take more time potentially um we'd yeah. love for this year to be able to finish the outside you know make it at least weather tight by wind next winter if not you know basically You've have a finished look, finish looking building <laughs> we've got huge openings December, big open like, space we can we to? can build the inside out afterwards i kind of love yeah, the yeah. idea of of having a nice cozy space cozy well, you know. <laughs> maybe the dry. The, dry where, might be warehouse, the worst we'll thing you're that. looking for. Sorry, the things we had to change upstairs. Um, yeah. I mean, the fact that we've got 
and upstairs is different to the class queue. Um, we yeah. did have to take out the balcony from our bedroom, um, but I, was, I think that was a very nice luxury. It's, it's really hard, and it's probably too hard to explain on camera, but we are, our um, master bedroom we had is stupidly large, uh, but it had glazing going out onto a balcony where we were cutting into the building. Now we've had to return the roof down. We've actually retained all of that glazing, haven't we? Yeah. So we'll be able to go up almost like a Juliet balcony. We'll be able to go up um, open doors and we'll be looking down onto the garden room, conservatory, plant room or whatever it's going to be. And because our fields and garden are downhill, we I've been up on a ladder, which I didn't like this bit, it was a very scary experience for me. Well, I kind of went up the steel frame whilst Joe quivered at the bottom holding the ladder. I was more shaking and screaming. Worked out finished floor level, stood in what will be our bedroom, and worked out that we still have a view down and out. And so... He thinks. He hopes. <laughs> yeah, I think it will work. So as well as having Velux windows outside our window, we'll, we will look down underneath the roof, out through the opening of the guard room where we've put bifolds, but they'll be stay open most of the time and be able to see all the fields still. And the lower you go, so when you're sat in bed, I don't know, but I, I think that's why we've left the glass there anyway. So now you know what it's all been about and where we are, what we're going to be building. We cannot, so what in the next stages time. are for us are we've got to discharge the conditions for the boundary before we can start above ground works. And of course there is the sill, um, which is the community infrastructure levy which when you build a new house you have to pay and contribute towards that fund for your county or area uh, if you're a self-build you're exempt from that but you have to have acknowledgement from your local authority that you are exempt before you do anything whether that's demolition like or sweeping hits the ground otherwise it's you know big bill and when it's charged per square meter that's not fun. So and that's what we need to do. And you also said that out. we needed to do that at the end too. Once There's you've another finished. another form. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise yeah. they can still hit you at the end, which is the one Part people two. forget yeah. to do. So, so there's that. Um, and then, of course, everything else that comes to self-build, whether that's insurance and, um, getting the, and the project next management done. stuff. Yeah. So we're, 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 the we're working on it. We've got the architects. Tom's coming tomorrow. Maybe we'll try and do a bit of filming with Tom. Yeah. We're going to be talking thermal stuff and drainage because we can start underground work. And I've been working out how much we've spent on planning the last two years. And like like that means anything. Reports, surveys. They should have a guess. Yes. Have a guess. Mm. Yeah. So we'll so go through that as a what, breakdown as to what architects fees, how much each planning app cost, um yeah. the differences between the two different planning firms we've used and how they price things. Yeah. Um so how much have we spent to not build a house is the question. Or how much have we spent to now have a much higher value property and farm. Yeah. Because realistically, if we sold this now with planning permission, it would so. sell for a lot, lot more money. We don't plan to do that because this is Maybe, so stressful. Maybe. I know that Will, the uh, estate agent who we, yeah, we said bought we wanted, through. Yeah. He follows us on Instagram. I think maybe I'll ask him. What see see what worth? the price increase. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and see if it really is worth spending money on consultants oh. and planning and stuff like that. Uh, and years of your life. Anyway, so there you go. Have a guess down in the comments how much you think we had to spend of all of that hard-earned money from the sale of our last house to... Or how much of our build budget have we had to blow yes. on getting to this point with oh. architects and things like that yeah. uh, we'll leave it there hope you guys are as excited as we are for this now we can actually start some real video content it's been a dry spell now because we finished this kind of yeah i know I we had still a... need to do our final video on this i know and the i had grief in the last video because unfortunately you can make out the corner where the cladding hasn't been finished um, keep on getting told off by them as well now yeah well there's some cedar in an auction at the weekend hopefully i'll get some to match We'll get it finished. Right, thank you for watching and putting up with us for the last two years of planning stress. Let's get building. And remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time. Here you go.
I've been waiting a long time to do that. That's called le legal demolition now. So you're nearly at floor height, but I'm gonna we're gonna go. It's a one block lower the window sill. Oh, okay. How's that? It's good, isn't it? Check, you can check the pigs whilst making a coffee. Oh, yeah, I do that already. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, 